An entitled mom's demon spawn tried to unalive me at school, but she somehow still blames me and I get in trouble. So I was around 11 or 12 when this happened. I was in the same grade as this entitled evil kid, and he'd always had issues where he enjoyed causing pain on others, whether it be physical or mental. They often did it through verbal or physical abuse of people. I was their main target at the time, as I was someone who suffered from intense mood swings. So this evil kid made multiple attempts to harm me. He would first try and insulting me, then physically pushing me. At first, I simply ignored them and walked away, but it grew worse over time. Eventually, this evil kid grabbed me and began to choke me, so I responded by kneeing him in the gut. Then the evil kid goes crying to a teacher, and I get in trouble despite actively trying to explain what happened. Even my friend saw it and told the teacher, but the evil kid kept crying and got the teacher to side with them. Eventually, the attacks got worse, from throwing sand to straight up charging me with a screw driver. I ended up getting a cut on my palm from grabbing the screwdriver away from them in desperation. They once tried to jam a screwdriver into me when my back was turned. Luckily, my other classmates noticed and warned me and pushed the evil kid away. Each day, it progressively got worse and worse. This kid tried to drown me. He tried to hit me with hammers. He even tried to push me down the stairs, ending up with me bleeding from my head. So finally, I told my mom who complained to the school. This kid's entire Titled mother got called in and defended her kid, saying that this kid was allegedly autistic and that they just don't understand what they're doing. She tried to say that he would never do anything like this and that I was overreacting and stuff like that. Because of the evil entitled mother, the school wouldn't punish this kid at all, while I got detention and scolded for defending myself. After a year of this, I snapped. It was after the evil kid insulted me over my adoption. For some context, I was left by my biological mom at an orphanage with almost no information about my past. And after he made fun of me about this, saying how I was just an orphan and looked like a homeless beggar, I snapped and grabbed at him as he was trying to punch me. I repeatedly slammed this evil kid into a table before throwing them to the floor. I began to beat them to the ground, punching, headbutting, anything to take them down. We continued to fight, punch, kick, and get into this big scrap until the evil kid pinned me down. Eventually, I was pulled away by my friends and and the evil kid and I were sent away out of class. The next day, the entitled mother is screeching about how I hurt her angel and that I should be suspended. She claimed that I was a danger and that I was overly aggressive. She tried to say that I was lying despite being covered in bruises and scars that her evil kid caused on my body. Even after multiple people claimed I wasn't the aggressor, she was insistent I was the one trying to start a fight with this kid, saying that it was my fault that her angel was simply defending themselves. Unfortunately, the teachers agreed with her and tried to get me suspended. Luckily, I had one teacher who was there for me and saw everything and defended me. That teacher convinced the others to let me off the hook and to finally punish this evil kid for the first time. The entitled mother was furious, but to everyone's relief, she pulled the evil kid out of school and he never came back. And I was finally able to have a day in my life where I wasn't constantly on guard. Sadly for me, now I can't help but feel uncomfortable sitting with my my back turned. After nearly having a screwdriver stabbed into me and being choked, I am left quite paranoid. Even after moving to a new city, I still feel afraid that someone is going to attack me. At the end of the day, I got away from this bully and was finally able to have somewhat of a normal life. This is beyond sad. This school completely failed to protect this kid from this other monster. Like, this should have been taken care of way in advance. The fact that this kid tried to choke another kid is more than enough evidence that these two need to be separated. I feel so bad for this kid. He has a permanent scar because of a screwdriver incident with this evil kid. That is not okay. This is blatant assault and I can't believe that the entitled mother tried to use the excuse of something like autism as a reason why this might be happening and how he doesn't know what he's doing. That is just a horrible cop-out that is very insulting to people with autism who function just fine and are not in any way, shape, or form aggressive. Like seriously, autism is never an excuse for assault. If a kid is that unaware of what they're doing and the fact that they're trying to unalive somebody, then they need to be pulled out of school and put in some kind of special program where they can learn and try and mature as a young adult. This school failed on so many levels, it's not even funny. I feel bad for the OP because they got basically their entire childhood taken away from them. And for the rest of their life, they feel paranoid because they think somebody's going to attack them. But at least that kid got pulled out of the school and he was able to get away from that bully even just a little bit. And it's also good news to hear that he went to a new school because that school failed 
failed him completely and he can do so much better. Am I the jerk for disowning my cousin for evicting us from her rental property? I'm a 22 year old female and my partner and I have been renting from my cousin for almost a year now. I feel a bit of backstory is needed to understand why this is so shocking and why I'm so hurt over the matter. My cousin and her husband are now in their late 30s, early 40s and my cousin has a now high paying job as a supervisor at a popular chain of supermarkets. I've idolized my cousin my entire life, even considering them secondary parental figures. They haven't always been so successful. Not even 10 years ago, they were both living with my mother, being fully supported by her. My mother is now very ill with various medical problems. However, this isn't really relevant to the story. As a child, my mother took my cousin in from foster care and throughout the years has supported her and her husband by either allowing them to live with her or allowing them to live, often for free, in one of my mother's properties that she had before separating from my father. As of a few years ago, my cousin and her husband found stable jobs. They bought a home and they had a child together. Instantly, our family dynamic changed, but it was bearable. Last year, my cousin reached out to my partner and I and asked if we would be willing to rent their house so that they can afford to purchase a second home that they really wanted to get. We were happy to do so because it meant we would have more space. They made us swear we wouldn't move out and that this would be a long-term arrangement because us moving would put them in a financial bind at that point. We agreed, also with the promise that in the event that they decided to sell years from now, we would be offered the house to buy from them instead of them putting it up on the market or something like that. This seemed perfect at the time, but it was too good to be true. Problems started to arise. Upon moving in, we really only had half the house we could work with because they never actually got most of their belongings out of the house, which really limited our space and made things really tough. However, I am a patient person who doesn't enjoy conflicts, so we have been trying to remedy what we can ourselves and lightly making suggestions of, hey, maybe you can come pick this up. However, over the weekend, my partner and I were visiting my mother, to which she sat us down and told us that my cousin's husband had called and said that they were considering selling the house to someone he worked with to get it off their back. This was a shock, of course, considering that we had discussed with them at the beginning that we would be offered the house, but we understood there was nothing we could do since in the end it was truly their home. We did all find it strange that he had reached out to my mom rather than us and also tried to excuse my cousin of any part in the matter. Maybe it was just to try and prevent us from being upset with her or something like that. Despite our agreement being primarily with her and their marriage making this a joint decision, regardless of what they claim. I reached out the next day after I collected myself, first making the offer that we would buy the home if given a bit more time, and also trying to find out if it was a done deal, to which I was told that it was. We were of course very angry and upset, but didn't realize the situation was about to get worse. My aunts came by my mom's and confessed that a month or so earlier, my cousin was laughing and bragging that my mom was about to be mad, but to guess who was moving in the house, we were currently renting. As it turns out, they are not selling the house, but actually are booting us out so her friend can move in instead. Knowing these people, there is no feasible way they are going to buy. In fact, they are likely to not even be capable of paying rent. This, of course, broke me further and sent my mother into a rage. My aunts claim they didn't tell us because they hadn't heard more about it and assumed she had changed her mind. When her husband called, he told my mom we would have three rent-free months to find a new place. However, when I spoke to him the following day, he lowered it to us needing to be out by the end of June. Now we know this is because my cousin has secured her friend a job that starts at the beginning of July. As bad as our luck is, if they would have told us even two weeks sooner, despite the amount of time they had planned this, we could have had a place secured and I could have a new job lined out, but telling us sooner meant that they likely would have missed out on a third month of rent. The amount of betrayal we feel over this is ridiculous and very painful. My mother and I have declared that they are dead to us. This means having absolutely nothing to do with either of them nor their child. Am I a bad person for this? For my mother, it's a huge slap in the face after all she has done for them over the years. And for me, it's the betrayal from the people I looked up to more than anyone in the entire world. This whole situation couldn't have come at a worse time in our family. Any advice that may help my situation is greatly appreciated. This person couldn't be further from the jerk for deciding to disown 
disown their cousin after their cousin basically pulled a fast one. There's so much to unpack here. Honestly, the cousin is a terrible person. They lied to the people that were renting. They went behind their back to make sure that they stayed an extra month so that they could get more rent out of them. And then they basically just disrespected the entire family all over a rental property. It seems like the decision from, hey, we're going to sell you this house once we get a better house to, hey, we're kicking you out and we're putting our friend in there. And by the way, we're not going to tell you when we're doing it so we can get more rent money out of you. Like, it seems like those two decisions went from like five miles an hour to 100 miles an hour. It seems like there was no gradual step and there was no in between. Like, what a crushing thing to do to someone, especially family. Overall, I don't blame you for cutting off your cousin because honestly, I would have done the exact same thing. How do I talk to my guilt tripping father and tell him that I can't go on a trip because I have an exam? I'm sorry if this all sounds so trivial, but I honestly do not know how to talk to him anymore because I feel so much anxiety about this situation. For background, I'm a 22 year old and I'm a junior in college and it is currently the middle of the semester. A close relative of ours happens to plan a nice trip this time of year in the upcoming month. So it's about a week or so from now as it seems. But unfortunately, the day of the trip coincides with the date of my exams. I really do wish I could join, but my professors do not accept supposed trips as an excuse. And I am on the brink of failing those specific subjects. So I do have to double my efforts. The problem is I cannot seem to tell my father any of this. Once he sets his mind into something, he usually doesn't accept no for an answer and would often resort in guilt tripping just to get his own way. He would say things such as, you cannot say no to me. Also stuff like, what are you trying to do? Disappoint everybody? Stuff like that. And it's really hard to get past it. You might be thinking right now, hey, you're 22. They have no choice in what you decide to do. And I do hope so too. But first of all, I still live under their roof. I can't move out. It's a cultural thing, really. As for finances, concept of rent on your parents' house does not exist here. Food expense is on them since I do live with them. But I pay for my dorm and other college-related fees out of my own savings. And lastly, I really, really can't take my father's fits. It really messes me up. I even once as a test tried to suggest what would happen if I couldn't go. And he immediately raised his voice and went into a tirade, saying stuff like, how could you do this to me? Or everyone except you will be there. Do not disappoint them. He even goes on to say in this tirade, if you're not going, then I'm not going. I won't be able to join the trip because of you. And stuff like, I don't care about what you need to do. I will not take no for an answer. I feel really anxious as of late about this entire situation. I spent more time worrying than getting ready for said exams. I really don't want to botch this one exam because I might fail. I just wanted to ask somebody's opinion. What do I do? The original poster needs to stand up for themselves and make their own decision. I understand that the dad is angry and that the dad is very upset most of the time when he doesn't get his way. But if you don't stand up now, when will it ever happen? This is your future we're talking about. You're going to college and you're about to fail your classes if you miss these exams. If your father can't understand that you're about to fail, then he has his priorities completely mixed up. And if you don't stand up for yourself now, this kind of behavior will always be okay. He will always think it's okay to step all over you and tell you what you can and can't do with your life. I understand that there might be some cultural differences here, but having some kind of backbone in the face of adversity and opposition to what you want to do is going to help you in the long run. And yeah, you're right. Your anxiety of like, hey, you're 22 and they have no choice in what you do with your life is exactly right. They have no choice or say in what you can or can't do. All the extenuating circumstances that you mentioned of living with them and eating their food and living under their roof does not matter with your future. Only you can decide what you do with your life. And the fact that your dad would rather have you fail your exams than go on this silly trip is pretty gross and disgusting. I'm pretty sure he's going to be kicking himself later once he realizes that you going on this trip means you have to spend another year in college. And for me personally, I would gear up with that being my argument. If he tries to give me any kind of sass, I would say I'm going to have to go to college for another year and I'm going to fail this class all because you want me to go on this trip that I blatantly don't want to go on. You don't have to do what he says and you really can make your own decisions. And in my opinion, it's time to stand up for yourself or you will always get walked over. My boyfriend has anger management issues and I don't know how to deal with it. So I'm 
I'm a 23 year old female and have been in a relationship with my first boyfriend for a few years now and he's always seemed to have anger problems. It's not to say he gets physical even though it's happened here and there. Nothing too big. He's grabbed my hair before, slapped me but more like a non-serious way. But my main concern is our conversations. He gets annoyed super quickly. I can just ask him the simplest question and he will be angry and defensive about it. This makes me anxious to have conversations with him because I'm not sure if he'll take something I say personally and become angry. For example, we are moving away from where we are currently living in a few months and I asked him if he told his parents about it and he became super upset and really angry. He said that he doesn't need to stress himself out right now and he doesn't need to tell them right now all this information. But honestly, I was really just wondering if he told them and that's all. Then he tells me how I annoy him with the questions that I'm asking him and then we get into this little argument which is mainly him being angry and me trying to tell him that I didn't mean anything by the questions that I asked. It's little things like this that he will get randomly so defensive about and I really don't understand why. It feels like he constantly thinks I'm trying to attack him but I'm literally not. I don't know if this is normal and it just really bothers me because I'm always afraid to speak to him about things. How do I deal with this? The first thing you need to do about this is have a serious conversation with him. This man has anger problems and he needs help. This is obviously damaging your relationship and that's the first thing that needs to happen before anything else goes forward. I'm also a little turned off that he has put his hands on you. That, in my opinion, is an absolute no-go and a big red flag. I don't care if it's playful or like this non-threatening way. It starts with that and then at least is something more serious. The original poster then goes on to say in the comments that she has spoken to her boyfriend about his anger management problems and that he thinks it's stupid and that he doesn't want to do it. And in my opinion, that is the answer that you need to move forward and say, I don't want to be with this individual. Anger like that is something that he's got to work on and if it's negatively affecting you, then in my opinion, I would say it's time to move on and find someone a little bit happier in their life. My parents and my neighbors have a ridiculous fight over a public parking spot. This happened several years ago and ended up being a really dumb conflict between my parents and my neighbor. I'll let you decide who's more entitled. When I was 17, I had gotten my driver's license and bought a really terrible first car. It wasn't great, but it did the job. With that, my family had three cars, but only two private parking spots for our house. We lived in a typical European residential suburb. Rows of houses, each with one car garage and a one car driveway. Fortunately, our street was a narrow street with one driving lane and a public parking on our side, along the hedges between the driveway. As the spot along our hedge was usually empty, we normally used it for one of our cars. The problem was that the neighbor across from us, an older gentleman, didn't like that and kept writing us notes that our car was preventing him from easily backing out of his garage and driveway. My parents found the notes too passive aggressive and chose to ignore them, only parking a little closer to the hedge to give him more space for backing out his car. The neighbor even tried calling the police to get us to move the car soon after he suddenly had a second car. And whenever we opened up the parking spot, he would immediately park his second car there and leave it for the next few days. My parents, who enjoyed provoking him, started doing the same whenever he moved his car from the space. While my parents and neighbor were playing musical chairs with the parking spot, they also began calling the local authorities for every minor rule breaking. For example, when the neighbor's hedge had started to grow around a traffic sign, or when we parked our car in a way that slightly blocked our driveway. Stuff like that eventually got pretty petty. So this went back and forth quite a while, over and over and over again between my parents and my neighbors. Eventually, the neighbor's son got involved and tried to be some kind of mediator between my parents and my neighbor, basically trying to convince both of them to cut it out and to try and find some kind of resolution to all of this. Eventually, I moved out and my car and myself vacated the empty spot about a few months later. So that way, my neighbor neighbor can at least back out of his driveway without having our small, tiny car parked in that spot. So what do you think? Who's more entitled, my parents or my neighbor? I think this story is very funny and I would say both parties are very entitled. This OP goes on to give other examples about how they would just do all they could to make the other lives miserable. Like you have every right to park on the street, but like I'm curious how that parking spot would in any way stop that guy from backing out of his driveway. I think this would probably be more of a situation where the guy just doesn't know how to back out and less to do with the fact that a car is parked on a public spot. Like that street spot next to the driveway is a public city parking spot that anybody can take and is completely up for grabs for anybody. So the old man neighbor has no say over who can or cannot park in it. But he can be really weird and decide to throw his car there for months.
months on end if someone happens to move their spot, which I don't blame him to an extent, but at the end of the day, wouldn't you having your car there prevent you from backing out your car? So I almost am in favor of the parents being a lot less entitled than the neighbors, but overall, it looks like things became pretty petty and passive aggressive once the neighbors started leaving passive aggressive remarks in the form of notes on this kid's car. Overall, both of these people are weird, and I think everybody should be able to park wherever they want as long as nobody's going to get towed. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright free music to use for your next stream.